Outcome Tracker and Outcome Tracking Strategy. The Outcome Tracker and Outcome Tracking Strategy is designed to support project staff in monitoring progress during project implementation. The Outcome Tracker should include information that is consistent with components of the ANA project framework and that are logically connected. Now let's start by taking a look at the elements. So the first three elements under the outcome tracking out of the first three out of the four are all relatively connected. So we'll do those first and then we'll come back to the last one. The first one is um, the application sufficiently includes an outcome tracker that shows logical connections between those components. The next one is the application fully identifies an accurate and viable means for measuring each indicator, which can be effectively and consistently used to assess pro progress. And three is outcome tracker includes rational targets for the required points in time, baseline end of each project year and the project period and three years post project, which are supported by the means of measurement. And this is the form we're going to use to, um, we call this the outcome tracker. This is not a required form, but we highly suggest using it for your application. It contains all the information that a &E requires. You will need to fill out one form per objective in your project. So you will see a lot of elements that have already been completed, such as your long-term community goal, current community condition, project goal, objective, primary outcome. We've identified these on, in the project framework. So you're going to consistently word, um, use the exact wording for your long-term community goal, use the exact wording for your community condition, use the exact wording for your project goal. So cut and paste will be your best friend. And um, uh, the objective too, you're going to cut and paste your objective into this form, um, cut and paste your primary outcome. And here we have indicator which again, where do we find the indicator? The indicator is the I part of the TTIP <coughs> objective. So we're going to restate the indicator here. And then we will look into how we're going to fill in the rest of the form. So here are some steps to start an evaluation plan. To start, we have the TTIP objective. We're gonna have that handy that you drafted under the project framework. The following steps will lead to an outcome tracker the a, a tool for evaluation. So step one is what are you intending to change and by how much? And luckily we have that information already. It is the indicator and the target from our TTIP objective. Step two is decide what is the best way to measure that change based on the following considerations. So the type of change, the first one is um, consideration is the type of change. For instance, many types of knowledge increase can be measured by pre and post testing. So the ideal is to test participants when they enter the project and um, test them when they leave the project and in between as um, you see fit for your project. So it might be quarterly, it might be monthly, it might be weekly until they leave the project. So whatever is applicable to your project design. The knowledge increase when they leave the project is the direct result of your project and that's what you want to measure. This works well for language fluency projects and um, any other skill upgrades as well. So what if you're um, upgrading workforce development skills or doing any other type of knowledge acquirement project? Um, the next uh, consideration is your organizational capacity to conduct evaluation. So evaluations bring up a lot of preconceived ideals and anxiety about what is needed for evaluation. And the, the ideal of expect, expensive consultants is gone. a and a would is specifically design the evaluation um, outcome tracker so that you communities can conduct their own evaluation. So these evaluations can be managed by staff with the appropriate tools. Um, sometimes it could be just, um, you know, fluency scale assessments and then tracking them on Excel, Excel spreadsheets. It could be that simple. So you need to consider um, what your staff is capable of doing. Um, you need to figure out um, what else you need to research um, or develop. You may need to develop evaluation tools such as a fluency scale um, during your planning phases of your project. So this will be your means of measurement. And it is just again, to reiterate, it is the best way to measure that 
um, change in um, target that we mentioned in step one. Step three is evaluation it involves tracking the same data point in different points in time. So you're going to determine those data points to track the project progression. Annie asks that you track the progress of your project in yearly increments. So year one, year two, or year three in the end of project. And then an additional point three years past the project end. So we'll discuss um, this one later on. So again, the means of, means of measurement will be the method you will be used to measure the change created by completing the objective. The baseline measurement is the starting point for those um, data points being started. So what are you starting with? And then your data points will be that same point, different um, that same measurement, different points in time. So it'll be at the end of year one, year two, year three, four for EMI <laughs> and the end of project and three years post project. So here is our outcome tracker using our example. And you will notice that um, the components are all verbatim from what we discussed in the previous recording on um, the framework. So we have our long-term community goal, current community condition, our project goal, and our first objective. Our primary outcome, we did that as well. And then for the indicator, we just pulled out the indicator and target on the indicator from our TTIP objective. So we're going to go into our means of measurement, and you're going to discuss um, give your means of measurement or what you're going to be measuring and how you're going to be measuring it. You're going to include that baseline. So what is your starting point? So what is that data point as you're starting your project? And in year one, you're going to do the same measurement for the end of year one, year two, end of project, and three-year post-project. So three-year post-project takes into consideration your sustainability plan. So this um, is a projection <laughs> into the future of how um, in taking consideration your sustainability plan, maybe your tribe has committed to absorbing that project into its um, specific department once the project ends. So you would um, anticipate how that would go. The, it doesn't have to be at the same level that it is while it was funded by a a but might be on like a lower level. Um, so you want to take that in consideration. You want to enter a data point for the three-year post-project. And then we have outputs on the bottom. Outputs, again, outputs are going to be finalized in the OWP. And once you finalize those outputs in the OWP, you want to consistently state your outputs and circle back and enter them here in your outcome tracker. Again, just a reminder that you want to do one of these forms for every objective that you have in your project. So for our example, uh, the means of measurement is that the participants will achieve 25% improvement on the following factors. So weight, BMI, um, blood pressure, A1C, fasting glucose, and cholesterol. So uh, my ideal is um, that the health department is going to um, have like an algorithm developed. Um, you know, maybe some of these conditions or these um, measurements might be weighted more than others. And so they would enter, um, they would take a baseline measurement, include that, and then it would be tested quarterly throughout the project. And they would enter it into this algorithm and that would give you the percentage improvement or, or fall <laughs> actually um, as possible. Um, and that would give, those numbers will be reported back to the project and they will track them. So the baseline for year one will be zero. Everybody's walking in and starting at ground zero. So this works particularly for this type of project. So you don't have an improvement or an increase or a decrease yet because you're starting at zero. The next year one, we are anticipating that 10 people, again, it's the number of participants that achieve 25%. I'm anticipating that 10 people in our project will achieve at least 25% improvement in year one. In year two, I'm suggesting there are 20 people that have achieved the 25% improvement in year two. And this will be explained narratively. We'll get that in a minute. But um, my numbers here, there'll be 10 in year one, 
there'll be 10 in year two. So I added it. So this is a cumulative. It's going to include the 10 from year one and the 10 from year two. And you need to, it's very important when um, we get to the next section of this outcome tracker. And being consistent, again, there'll be 10 more that I've reached it for a total of 30 people at the end of the project period. Uh, for a three-year post-project, the tribe is going to absorb this project as part of their health care. It's just not going to be at such a, um, as many numbers. So I'm anticipating that at the three-year post-project, there'll be 25 new people that have improved their, their, um, these factors. They, they achieved that 25% improvement. Again, this will be all described narratively. So again, just you're going to explain narratively the contents of the outcome tracker. So you're going to describe how the baseline was determined or will be determined. You can kind of defer that. It might be one of the first activities you do once your project is funded is determine what your baseline is. Um, but it, I think it helps if you already determine it if possible. The next one is describe the means of how the means of measurement was chosen, how the collection of the data will lead to successful achievement of the targeted indicator and the objective. Next, you want to describe those benchmarks for each year. So remember, I have that distinction of those numbers were cumulative, you know, like the, the year two numbers included year one plus the additional people from year two and the same thing for year three. Um, you could just do 10 for each year. So it could be 10 for year one, 10 for year two, 10 for year three, but explain that, that those are the new people in a, who have achieved that um, increase in their um, health conditions. So it's very important that you um, narratively describe that. It makes a lot of difference. So, um, you know, everybody thinks differently. Everybody measures things differently. Um, you need to um, explain it so that you remember to explain things like you're talking to a complete stranger so that it's very clear whoever picks up your your application understands what you mean by these numbers in your outcome tracker and then the third year is um, again it's tied to sustainability you have to explain how you took your what, what your sustainability plan is so again you may have to circle back if you haven't determined that yet and then um, apply your sustainability plan to your numbers and give your reasons for it. Okay, so for our last element under the outcome tracker is um, specific to the outcome tracking strategy. So the proposal identifies an appropriate plan, including staffing, effective data management systems, and an organizational process that will successfully utilize data to inform and improve program quality. Okay, so going back to our steps in the evaluation plan, step four, is identify the data that needs to be collected, the steps and those tools necessary. So provide the details of the evaluation plan, what data will be collected, how often and by whom. Identify the tools that will be necessary, any assessments or scale, software or computers. Also, it helps to include information on how the data will be stored, especially if it's sensitive personal information on participants. You should detail how you will keep that information confidential through um, any encryption as well as the confidential confidentiality policies of your tribe or organizations, if it is applicable to your project. So recap again, um, include uh, the data that you're collecting for your outcome tracker. So in this case, it will be um, the, the blood work that will indicate an improvement in those conditions, how often it will be collected. And for the, um, the project in, um, that we're using for an example, this will be quarterly. It'll be collected quarterly. And who and how will manage this data. So this is very important. So you want to identify the staff person who will be responsible for collecting this data. I often refer back to um, first aid training. When you come upon an emergency, um, you specifically pick a person, point to that person and say, um, you call 911, instead of just yelling, somebody call 911. So um, what happens is people assume somebody else is calling 911 and the call doesn't get made. So this is very applicable to data collection. If you don't identify the person, I mean, identify them in their tasks and OWP, I would even include it in their job descriptions. Um, you wanna be very specific about who is responsible for collecting and managing the data so that it gets done on a regular basis. So very often people think that somebody is collecting data and then you get to the end of your project and nobody is 
collected the data that is specifically what you want to avoid. Um, if this evaluation should be done um, throughout the entire life of your project in timely increments so that it's always um, being collected and maintained and then used to figure out you know, how you can improve your project or how it can be used in the future. So you want to include the systems and tools that will be used, whether you're purchasing certain softwares or even if you're doing something simple like tracking fluency rates, um, your assessment results on a spreadsheet that is totally acceptable if it's applicable to your project. So, um, and give your policies for capturing and storing the data, especially again, if it's sensitive. So you wanna make sure that you maintain um, that confidentiality. So thank you for attending this um, recording on the outcome tracker and the outcome tracking strategy.